Hello and welcome once more to Logie Live here in McLean's uh, Bookmakers. Delighted to say that Kevin Madden, Antrim and also GA star and Irish News columnist joins us today. You're heavily involved in the sport still too. Tell us about that. What are you doing with yourself now? In 2009, Adrian and I launched a business called Break for Ball, which organises GA team building weekends at a variety of locations across the country. Um, we organise weekends in Donegal, in Galway, in uh, Mayo, in Monaghan, in Belfast, at various locations for teams. We organise their weekend from their accommodation to their pitch facilities. We've got some great high profile GA figures that take coaching sessions for us. Notably Jimmy McGuinness has taken sessions for us in the past. So what we do is we take the hassle out of organising weekends for teams and we bring it all under the umbrella of Break for Ball. To, to be successful at that particular business or indeed to be successful at all sport, you have to open your eyes and be expansive and think outside the box, don't you? You have to look at all sports and the way the techniques they use. I think so and you even look at the way the GA, GA has, has evolved itself in the last number of years and, and how we've learned from other sports as well. I work as a full-time sports development officer so it's good to get an insight into soccer, into rugby and even to some of the minority sports like hockey and gymnastics to see what way they do their business and I think it's testament to how the GA has evolved the fact that Celtic, one of the biggest uh, soccer clubs in Europe, have now recruited Jimmy McGuinness onto their books. Now you're talking about minority sports which leads us on nicely to Division 3 of the National League. Whenever you look at the likes of your own Antrim and Fermanagh in there, Division 3 is a bit of a minefield when it comes to the National League, isn't it? Division 3 is an absolute nightmare, Logan, and I wouldn't like to be trying to pick the winner of it. Um, I think Mead and Monaghan are the two sort of standout candidates for promotion. But outside of that, you have Antrim, you have Cavan, uh, you have all those teams that are going to be really champing at the bit. And I think the, the key to it is whoever can get off to a good start. Now Antrim have Cavan at home in Casement Park this weekend. And if Antrim win this weekend, then they're going to be setting their sights and maybe trying to gain promotion. If they're beaten, then they're going to be looking underneath and they're going to be thinking, is this the year that we're going to be relegated back to Division 4? So uh, it's a real minefield, as I say, you've me and Monaghan, who are going to be the obvious candidates for promotion. Then you have the Antrims, the Cavans, the Fermanas and the Wicklows, who are all going to be trying to keep their head above water. Uh, when you look at last year, you know, uh, Fermanagh got up out of Division 4, which many people expected. It's going to be difficult for Peter Canapan and Fermanagh in Division 3 this year. It is. It's going to be difficult for, for Fermanagh and um, their big favourites along with Wicklow to get relegated. But they're going in a very realistic position that they know that they're going to have to really punch above their weight. They know that they're going to have to produce exceptional performances every week. So they're going in a very honest position that they know they'll have to fight for their lives to stay in the division. And if there's one man can keep Fermanagh in Division 3, it's Peter Canavan. But the big challenge will be do they have a scoring forward to be able to replace the likes of Seamus Quigley, who doesn't seem to be involved this year? Division 2, any thoughts there? Division 2 is a minefield, for, not necessarily because of the quality of the teams involved, but more because of the unpredictability. Uh, you have Derry, you have Leash, you have Galway and you have Armagh. And it's very difficult to know what, uh, what sort of team is going to turn up in the day, because Derry, Galway and Armagh are teams in trans transition. Leash have two or three years under them uh, with Justin McNulty, so I fancy Leash to come out of Division 2. Right, we move to Division 1, possibly the hardest division assembled, I'd say, in Gaelic games in the past decade. So, now, this is a minefield. The Division 1 campaign is so exciting. When you look at the eight teams involved, Logie, there's no doubt they're the eight best teams in the country at the minute. And Dublin and Cork, for me, are probably the standout teams, and they're going to be the teams that will be able to produce the consistency every week because they have got big squads and they both seem to be going fairly well at the minute. If you're looking for an outside bet for the Division 1, I actually fancy Kildare. You'll get about 12 to 1 on them. I backed them at 22 to 1 before Christmas. They've just won the Burn Cup. They've brought Jason Ryan into their backroom team, and I think Kieran McGinney is going to change the perspective this year, and he's going to try and maybe nail down a national title. Uh, in the form of the National League to try and build for championship. Every other year it's always been about the championship but I think this year he's going to put a big emphasis in the league and I don't think Kildare will be too far away. In a perverse way but when it comes to the National League in Division 1 there, there almost seems to be more interest in the teams that are going to be relegated as opposed to the teams that are going to win it. Is, is that fair? I think that's the, that's the Irish nature of always <laughs> looking on the downside of life. You know, We always look at the negatives and, and you're right but it is intriguing and I think the fact that it's so competitive then it's a case of not necessarily who's going to win it but who's going to take the dreaded drop, drop to Division 2 because perhaps there's more prestige in getting relegated from a division than there is from actually winning it. But I think Donegal are going to be 
uh, maybe in trouble this year. I think they're going to suffer from the fact that Carl Lacey and Mark McHugh aren't going to be involved in the early stages of the National League. Michael Murphy's involved with DAT and Sigerson. Um, so their A might be more on the Ulster Championship and the All-Ireland. Um, and I have to say I'm, I'm sort of afraid for Down and I think Down are maybe going to be a wee bit out of their depth and I can see them getting relegated. In the Irish news, I'm sure, I think I've read you uh, talking about this new proposal about like let's put let's put it this way: Gaelic football, amateur sport, rugby, professional sport, two cards. Okay, soccer, professional sport, two cards, yellow, red. In Gaelic football, they're now proposing to have a tick, a yellow, a black, and a red. Is this not farcical? I can understand the motive behind it to try and take the cynicism out of the game. You know, if you paint the picture, you're four points down with two minutes to go, and your team's in the attack, and you need a goal and one of the opponent defenders pulls you down for a free kick, it's absolutely no use to you. Um, so I think in, in that situation there has to be a more punishable offence than just simply uh, a tick or a yellow card because um, a yellow card or a free kick at that stage of the game isn't going to so give you your goal chance back. But I agree with what you're saying Logie, to bring an extra, an extra form of recording in for referees in the way of a black card uh, added to a yellow card to a red card and a tick. It's just going to confuse referees who already find it difficult to take control of the game. Um, it is, it's, it's farcical. Um, it's going to have to be reviewed before it's implemented. Um, I understand the, the motive of it, but I don't understand um, the, the way that it's going to roll out practically. Kevin, yeah, whenever I do sport and you do all the various sports, people ask you various questions. When it comes to Gaelic football, there's always one question everybody asks everybody. And it's the question everybody wants to know. Who's going to win the All-Ireland? You can tell by the fact that I've paused here, Lucky, that <laughs> <laughs> I certainly don't know the answer to that question. Um, you're in the big money in the Irish news, you must have, you have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you read my articles closely every week, you would know I don't get too many right. Um, we were like Benny Tierney that way, but um, I think the obvious candidates for 2013, obviously Donegal, whenever they get their full complement of players back, uh, they're going to be very difficult to beat in Ulster. And they went through an all Ireland campaign this year and they just were so solid looking, you know, they were convinced in every single game. And I think if Jimmy McGuinness can reproduce that level of intensity and the focus is still the same and they keep their full panel injury free and then they're going to be very very difficult to beat. Outside of Donegal you have Dublin who I felt we didn't really see the best of last year. You know maybe the, the hangover from winning the final the All-Ireland in 2011 um, and they just petered out last year uh, to Mayo. Um, I think Cork are going to be back with a bang and maybe this is Conor Coonan's last year and they're going to be there thereabouts. If you're looking at an outside bet then Mayo maybe at 10 to 1, you know, James Horne's done a fantastic job there and they're going to be there thereabouts this year uh, and possibly if Kieran McGinney can um, bring Kildare to the next level then there's probably your top 5 or 6 teams. Was that an answer or not? I asked you who won it, Listen, you sound like a politician, I think you named every county. <laughs> well, put my head in the chopping block, I'll go for Dublin or Cork. <laughs> so I see listen, you have your, your wee chit here for your free bet for cash for kids from McLean's, could you show me that to see what you're, who you're going to put your 50 pounds to? to see if Cash for Kids are going to make a few pounds? To answer your question then, Louis, £50 in Dublin to win the All-Ireland. 